Hello and welcome to KSP Career Mode. I'm your host Gromforks and today we will be doing the long range communications relay that we will be launching in Kerbin Orbit. First, we're gonna be assembling the long range comms relay satellite and then we will be focusing on the launcher vehicle. As always, uh, this time I actually decided to do it a little bit differently just to go with the Pro Dubodine Round Bus, which is a part of Kerbal Restock, I believe. And let's go SAT Kerbin Long Range Comset 1. It's not exactly a long, long range, but it should be long enough to go, I think, around 200 gigameters. So it should be able to reach Duna Eve, no problemo. Uh, maybe, maybe even for no, sorry, 75 gigameters. Yes, Duna and Eve should be reached further out. I couldn't tell because I don't know all the distances by heart. Sorry, but there are gonna be two antennas on it, uh, and there are gonna be the two big foldable ones. One of them will be pointing, I think, to Duna, another one will be pointing to active vessel. And on the second satellite, one will be pointing to EVE, another one will be pointing to active vessel. The reasoning behind, because I want to start launching interplanetary probes, and of course, they're gonna be unmanned. I mean, what did you think? Uh, so, the idea behind it is that we send unmanned probes to do flybys, maybe even orbits of Duna and EVE, and start venturing further into the, you know, Kerbal, Kerbal system. So, yeah, as you can tell, I've been experimenting a little bit with these, um, with the trusses, because I wanted to make somewhat different style of solar panels. These look good, but I'm actually not yet convinced if I'm gonna go down that route. Maybe something more exotic should be done. Hmm, let's see. Can we do just regular, you know, this guy? And no, 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 oh, oh. We have something, Houston. All right, let's check out. Okay, with this truss, I need the small cubicle. Um, yeah, but if I build them like these, it's gonna be too much. I should probably build diagonally like this and then just attach the solar panels, perhaps like this. And if I put them on the other side, let's see how they will fare. Okay, that looks good. Okay, but if I fold them like these, there is... Everybody fold, you, antenna, also fold, so this will be our launch satellite. I'm really, really needing some actuators here, you know, like, I don't know, clamps or something, or, you know, hinges, for example. I would love to be able to fold the satellite out and then do all sorts of cool stuff, but I haven't unlocked it yet. That's locked behind much more science, sadly. Hopefully... Once we start sending interplanetary probes into solar orbit and all others, it will be better. Okay, I'm gonna remove this top. The satellite is designed. Now, we need two of these satellites and they will be going into polar... What now? Look at these guys. Apparently they have issues. I have no idea why. For the life of me. Okay, uh, tell you what. Okay, this looks that hideous. No, I designed it to look like this and I'm gonna make it like this. Now, fold, please. Thank you. You, okay, fold, please. What's wrong with the symmetry? For crying out loud. Okay, tell you what, if you won't work in symmetry, I'll align you manually. Yes, I'm committed. Deal with it. Game. What can I tell you? Okay. It seems to be working fine now. 
I'm gonna just strut the bananas out of it. Auto strut everywhere with the heaviest part. Yes, please. Thank you. Strutted those two together. Everything else together. Good, good, good. Custom groups. Uh, number two will be solar panels. Number one will be antennas. And number three will be these large antennas. Not that I ever use them, but, you know, it's good to have them. All right. Okay. I mean, it's an absurd launch vehicle. I would really, reiterating, love to get... Come on, don't get symmetry shit on me now, boy. I need these, and now I need this, and then decoupler. Yeah, works. Perfect. Yeah, I needed a little bit more oomph because I wanted the satellites to go into their own orbits on their own, rather than me doing an all kinds of weird stuff to them. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly recheck the staging, making sure that everything is kosher. And after that, we will be booking them and launching just... Okay, a couple of upper stages needed just minor tweaks. Usually the upper stages I don't even use as stages because I decouple them individually just to be on the safe side. However, it doesn't hurt to have it all nicely aligned just in the case of a misclick and I press the space bar accidentally. Now the last ring as I said will go in a polar orbit but I'm gonna have it at 90 degrees to both of these uh, circles. Yeah as you can tell I'm a piss poor engineer when it comes to perfectly aligning everything so like this and polar orbit. Yes that's the plan. Dorothy, are you ready for some launching some comsats? All right. Okay. First, we'll fire up the engines, and then we're gonna go with the actual boosters. And up and up and we go. Beautiful. Rolling to polar orbit and going immediately northwards. However, this is the surface north, not the orbital north. That's something that I need to keep in mind. Crossing the uh, cloud layer with this ridiculous vehicle, ditching the boosters. Okay, some of them went bye-bye. Let's switch to the orbital view, and now we're gonna correct the orbit to go polar orbital. There we go, beautiful. Apoapsis is climbing. By the way, you are watching this in two times time acceleration because I figured there's really no need to go, you know, slowly. All right, we are coming up on the 80, 90 marks. At 100, I'm going to shut off the engines. Thank you very much. And I'm going to circularize, hopefully, into 100 by 100 orbit. That's the idea. All right, oops. I started clicking willy-nilly. That happens sometimes. Uh, anyway, manure node. Yeah, and I know what manure is. It's not manure, it's maneuver node, you dummy. Okay, manure node would be something completely different. Right. Okay. This minor tweak, let's go, 100 by 100. Okay, I'm actually pretty satisfied with this. Minor tweaks to see if we can get it 100 by 100 exact. Oh yeah. Okay, so a hundred. Okay, Dorothy, shut up, please. Okay, now we are have a burn in 16 seconds. I need to focus. Give me a second here, will ya? Right. Let's point the maneuver. Yes, that's the word. Prograde. And the burn comes in five. Four, three, two, one, ignition. And we will burn through three stages for this burn. So the first burn being the regular, all three boost, all three booster engines. Then we will be decoupling those right about. Now, ish, kaboom, bye bye. Then we have additional 300 meters per second 
on this booster and then we will be ditching that one for the terrier engine all right 100 more meters per second till main engine cutoff and separating the booster and up there we go as you can tell here we have uh, more than enough. We have 800 meters per second. Normally you would have 3000, but these satellites are heavy and there are some additional fuel tanks. So, yeah, and they're heavy because of the fuel tanks, of course. So, yeah, that's why thrust weight is 0 0.7, but it doesn't matter. We are almost orbital. Another 100 meters per second and we will be in orbit and a polar orbit it is. Now 50, come on, rise up. You know, I always plan these perfect orbits uh, at 100 by 100, and then I settle for 110 by 90, I think it will be fine. Yeah, Dorothy doesn't mind, she's happy as a doorknob. Okay, well, Dorothy, time to earn your, you know, big bucks. Now, we will be going, I think, all the way to the North Pole of Kerbin, and then we will be deploying a satellite that will be going uh, southwards. Sorry, didn't get much sleep today. Right now, okay. Yeah, apparently, Dorothy is pretty chatty today. What can you say? It happens. Now, I'm thinking to going apoapsis, probably 990, around 1000 by 1000 again, probably, maybe 1100 even, or, uh, I don't know, 1000 even, possibly. Now, that needs to be performed not by the main craft, but rather a probe of the craft, so we will need to detach one and it will happen in four minutes two seconds good to know how much time we have let's pull up the antenna right and let's decouple you we have apparently connectivity so uh, bye bye switching to the probe we shall Plan another maneuver node. What can I? What did I tell you? There we go. Try to be exactly polar, and yank it up once again to say 1,000 kilometer apoapsis. There we go. Right about there ish, kinda. Right. Now that will be 395 meters per second, which means we should have more than enough to circularize. Good. We have direct control over the vessel. That's very nice. And we should start unfolding the solar panels. Now, what button was it? Let's see. Was it, hmm, one or two? I guess I got it right. Nice. Now, you target shall be active vessel. Good. And you target shall be Duna. Thank you. I will not activate them just yet. I will activate them after we have done our burns. With those burns being pointing maneuver prograde and just coast. Do it. You know. Oh, I need to activate the engine. Yes. That's a really important thing, because otherwise no burns will happen. Yes. All right. So the burn will be in two minutes and 30 seconds. Shall we queue it up? Of course we will. Node prograde, execute. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Might as well time accelerate and enjoy the show. Beep, beep. We have plenty of power. We shouldn't have any problem whatsoever with these relays. I'm at least hoping that we won't, but you yeah, know, you never know. 
I've been wrong before. Many times, in fact. All right, so let's see. We are accelerating till we hit our burn time and then the Terrier engine should kick in. Hopefully, possibly, probably. Oh, there we go, beautiful. That's the money shot that we all came to see. Bye-bye, deployer. We are going into higher orbit. Normally, I don't think it would be a good idea to make the burns with the, you know, all the all the solar panels open, but we don't model that much space debris in KSP, so it's not really that big of a deal. Now, apoapsis, we are at 1006, so let's just let's just extend it and circularize it nicely if we can i want it to be just slightly higher orbit than the medium range one so that they never intersect in trajectory and that they never collide not that they ever would the chance would be well, like one in a million or something however you know when you get a chance one in a million that's still one in a million so let's make it zero in a million shall we Right, so that's 331 meters per second burn, which we will lovingly queue and then do the burn. Okay, node, execute, thank you. Ah, it's aligning so nicely. Oh, look at it go. And it's spinning. Okay, execute plan maneuver. We have hold maneuver program, and that's gonna happen in 32 minutes. Beautiful. Let's give it a little bit time nudge, shall we? We are going down, and this is the benefit of having so many satellites in various rings. Now, our, you know, relay network is starting to be a bit more reliable, so we can count on it to do various things. And I think these uh, rings all intersected at 90 degrees, I think that gives you almost the biggest robustness. If I would bother to actually place the uh, uh, all the satellites in the, you know, like, equilateral triangle then it would be literally perfect but i mean what's the fun in that okay the maneuver shall happen in say 10 ish seconds let's just observe as it happens oh that's a nice picture pretty pics there we go Beautiful burn over the Kerbin's south pole. Maneuver note removed, completed. Thank you. Now it's time to open up our... Look at those bananas. Now that's what I call a very, very beautiful satellite. And it's a long range satellite. I mean, long range is being the relative word. I'm actually thinking... Let's decouple the satellite. I no longer need the boosters. I will do it by, you know, range safety boom when it goes. Not that I have that much range, but, you know, there's always a delete option in KSP. Now, let's rename it, shall we? So, we will call you George. No, set, Kerbin, long range, communications, relay. Yeah, I know, I like boring names. Maybe it would be better to call them George and Pete or, you know, George and Steve. Since there there will be two, maybe they should be Alan and Steve. If you know that joke with these, uh, what do you call, prairie dogs going like, Alan, 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 Steve, Steve, Steve. So, yeah, that kind of reminded me. Right, so let's deploy the second one. And the second one will be in the same roughly orbit, roughly the same orbit, except it will, should be on the opposite side. Like I said, nobody's perfect, but, you know, let's try and make it nice if we can. May not be realistic, but it's Kerbal enough, and I like it. So... Okay, node maneuver prograde, execute the plan maneuver, beautiful. 
All right, and that will happen in 1 minute and 12 seconds. Now, opening up the solar panels, and I'm probably the more sharp eye, the mind you are screaming at me right now. Because I'm doing this post commentary. And in the comments, tell me why. All right. Let us accelerate until the start of the burn. The burn will be in 30 seconds, 20, 10, 9, 8, 7, 5, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition. Ignition. I said ignition. Right, so, who did guess what happened? I'm just observing this marvelous view and being totally clueless as I was, you know, recording the episode and I was like, what the hell? Shouldn't it be already completing its burn by now? The correct answer is yes, it should. But why isn't it? I really look forward to hearing your comments. Okay. Right about now, I think the old me realized that something is wrong and realized, oh, I'm 40 seconds after the burn. What happened? Right, I forgot to activate the engine. Yes, I'm a doofus. Told you I didn't know what I'm doing. Right. I mean, it doesn't matter in the end, our orbit will still end up roughly similar. I'll probably just need to do a lap or two, just to make sure that the satellites are on the opposite side of the circle. So as you can see, many relays firing up now, because we have connectivity and redundancy, which is beautiful. Okay, so uh, rather than waiting for this to happen, I'm first gonna deorbit Dorothy. I don't want her glowing green like uh, I did with Dan. So yeah, let's see if Dorothy can come back home safely. And for your benefit, I'm gonna time accelerate it a little bit. See, so like you know, say two time time acceleration, especially when we hit the orbit or when we hit the atmosphere. We have 1000 meters per second, let's decouple this and let's decelerate ever so slightly. Let's not hit this on the nose. Okay, pass it. Oh, it's not passing. Bye bye. There we go. So. Dorothy. I really hope you brought Toto. Okay, we're descending downwards because we're still accelerating and I'm gonna hit the decelerator again. You know, hit the brakes, Dorothy. Technically, those are not brakes. Those are more like uh, reverse engine. I have brakes and they're called drogue chutes and then the real chutes. So, descending ever so slightly and uh, with, through the magic of time acceleration, I have spared you the long and arduous uh, journey back to Kerbin. So, there we go. Then cut the chute and then we'll do the main ones. Beautiful. 300 meters above sea level. Now that's exciting, isn't it, Dorothy? I'm pretty sure she's pumped. All right, landed, perfect. Now, one thing that remains is Dorothy got a ribbon for the solid fuel booster ribbon. Nice. Anyway, uh, let's recover these two stages. And after that, we will be finishing up this small satellite that could. Okay, now we will increase your orbit and we shall be queuing it. This time with engine activated. Yes, thank you so much. Now... We're following the satellite and now we should see the burn happening somewhat over the South Pole. Come on, slow down time and here we go. The engine lit up this time. All right, 
We have our orbit, beautiful, and through the magic of time acceleration, I'm just gonna decouple everything, rename the satellite. First will be towards active vessel, second one will be towards Eve, as I said. And then we need to rename the satellite and call it a day. Satellite Kerbin Long Range Relay 2, without any imagination. There we go, beautiful. So, and they are almost on the opposite side of the circle. Now it's time for that pretty pics and the ending credits. Now, okay, wait, wait, but dizzy, getting dizzy. Okay, good. Pretty pics time. Okay, antenna, yes. Oh, look at it go. Isn't it glorious? Isn't it marvelous? Oh, yeah. This is gonna be the money shot for the episode. I can feel it. I can feel it in my bones. Okay, move it, move it. There we go. Okay, as for those of you that know me, I'm spamming F1 like my, there's no manana. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked the episode. Do hit a like and tell the YouTube algorithm that you appreciate the content. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe and you'll see more episodes. I will see you in the next one.